Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode occurred in the remote native lands just east of Unalakleet, Alaska. In this remote and scenic environment, one of the most horrific struggles happened between a bear and a human occurred and changed several lives from that point forward. Remember to like and subscribe to get alerted to our future episodes. Now let's get started with our story. Alexi Pitka was an Athabascan native and was looking for fresh meat near the Yukon River. The year was 1950. World War II had ended a few years before, and another one was brewing in Korea. But Alexei survived close to the land and was happily distanced from the tribulations of the rest of the world. Hunting for subsistence was a regular part of his day-to-day life, and he was a very good hunter. He hadn't been able to find any moose or caribou for a few days, but continued to see a medium-sized brown bear every once in a while. Having never killed a brown bear before, he didn't exactly consider them his first option for the cooking pot. He definitely needed to find some camp meat and decided, since it was the only meat he could find, that he would shoot it. He also knew that the brown bears of the area may get hungry and kill you when they're desperate. He clambered and clawed his way along some willows and bushes and around a small lake until he got to within shooting distance of the bear. He was now about 200 yards from the bear and could see that it was actually a good-sized black bear. Alexei drew down on the bear with his hunting rifle and calmed his breathing so he could place his shot in a vital spot. He fired his 30-30 Savage and the bear piled up in a heap, not even completing the step it was taking. He was knowledgeable about bears and how clever they are, so he chambered another round and fired over the bear to see if it reacted. The bear didn't even twitch, so he was relieved to know that it was dead and he could approach it. He worked his way through the brush and toward his new supply of camp meat. Alexei leaned his hunting rifle against a nearby tree as he observed the bear was laying on its side and clearly dead. As he closed the distance to within around 10 feet, the bear sprang to its feet and charged. The bear collided with the man with such force that it knocked him temporarily unconscious. The impact sent a dull pain through his body, and as he regained his senses, he could see a clouded shape moving above him. An unbelievable stench filled his nostrils and helped bring him back to awareness. He knew he was on his back, and slowly his eyes focused on the blurry mass now standing over him. The bear was staring straight into his eyes from just a few inches away. His mind was racing as to what he should do. He remembered that his knife was sheathed at his side, and slowly he reached for it. He had no other options. Alexei plunged his knife into the bear's gut and then passed out. When he came to a few seconds later, he plunged the knife in again, and the bear's warm blood flowed over him. At that moment, he called upon his native heritage and started to speak to the bear as a friend, telling it to go away and that he would not hurt it anymore. Then he passed out again. His pain and blood loss was preventing him from completing anything to improve his situation. Each time he came back to consciousness, he would pass out again. After a few seconds of this cycle, he opened his eyes and looked around. The bear was gone. Alexei was barely alive and started to try to regain his feet and compose himself. A short time later, he heard the black bear a short distance away throat its death roar, and he knew the battle was over. But he was not sure if he had actually won. He had his senses enough to know that he had to get the half mile to his boat in order to live. He began crawling across the forest duff and praying the entire way. His blood was dripping down into his face and his eyes. He wiped the blood away, but could only see out of one of his eyes. He'd lost all sense of time as he pushed the brush out of his way, slowly creeping along on his elbows. After what was the most painful few hours of his life, he arrived on the bank of the river, near where he'd left his canoe. He was exhausted and had lost too much blood to stay conscious. His head dropped onto the gravel of the beach. He wasn't aware of how much time had passed, but it had been 36 hours since he was brutalized. He hadn't had any water or food for that time, and he was immensely thirsty. As he lay there, his strength had built up a bit, and he slowly crawled his way toward a brown, blurry object just about 30 yards away. He was hoping it was his canoe, but his vision was so impaired he couldn't be sure. After an exhausting struggle, he'd arrived at his canoe. He reached into his canoe and grasped around, trying to find his cup. His fingers found it, and he reached out toward the creek and filled it. He lifted the cup to his lips and gratefully dumped the water into his mouth. He felt the front of his chest get cold in the nighttime air. None of the water went into his mouth. He was perplexed and reached up to his face and found that he had no mouth in which to put the water he so needed. The desperation of the situation overwhelmed him, and he prayed aloud for help. 
Alexei collapsed on the bank and couldn't do any more. He sat for almost 20 more hours before he could hear some voices in the distance. He looked up and saw his friend, wife, and his daughter paddling up in two canoes. His rescuers tended to his wounds as they paddled in an immense effort to bring him back to Tanacross and to the medical resources it offered. Doctors at the small medical center marveled at the fact that he was even still alive. His condition was terrifying in its appearance. Almost all of the right side of his face was torn off, and cartilage and subsurface tissues exposed. His right cheekbone had been completely torn away, as well as his eye and nose. His left cheek had also had a chunk of tissue removed from it, and almost his entire mouth was missing. The skin of his face was peeled down and dangled from where his jaw used to be. He had a total of three teeth remaining. Incredibly, Alexei Pika survived and went through several plastic surgery operations to make his life easier and reconstruct parts of his face. His hospital stay dragged on for months to ensure he was on the mend and did not develop any infections as a result of the attack. Alexei survived not only because he was extremely tough, but he was extraordinarily fortunate his family and friends found him in time. He bore the results of the altercation for the rest of his life and returned to his village, Kaltag, and his family. I hope you enjoyed this episode and promise to make more for your enjoyment. Make sure to like and subscribe to Scary Bear Attacks and check out Cryptids Canada if you like paranormal, Bigfoot, or mystery stories too. Be safe, especially in bear country.